देख बिना ब्रेक डाउनलोड टक ऐप Nikki, 12, 12 years of T20 cricket, uh, starting from 2007 in South Africa. Uh, what are teams looking at? You know, uh, you still you scored 144, too small to defend actually. Would you say so, or you know, what is an ideal score irrespective of the wicket? 160, what seven runs and over, eight runs and over, nine runs and over. Yeah. What is it like? Yeah, look, I, I think that varies um, as as to the different surfaces you get on. You know. So I certainly knew the times with, we, we, we played with Pakistan and Dubai. We knew that if we got 150, we, we would generally defend that. Um, it's different here in India. The wickets, the, the wickets are really good. Uh, so you've, I think you've got to be up at the 170s, certainly, on, on good wickets. But again, it's, and I said to our players as well, you know, it's hard to put targets on T20 cricket because sometimes you go out there thinking I've got to go and get 180 and you take... Far too many risks early on, particularly setting, and then you clear you know, chasing. The scoreboard tells you what to do, but but setting is uh, you know, you, and then you realise you get bowled out for 140, and you realise well maybe 155 would have won us the game. So uh, assessing conditions is is still the key to that. I do think on the good wickets here, and, I, and I'm, I'm in the batting is just going, it's going to a different level all the time. I do think you know the the 150s are becoming. 170s definitely, um, and then if you pre- if you get early wickets and strike early, you can certainly defend that. I still think 2020 is about taking wickets. I think 2020 is about putting your best bowling unit out on the ground because that's the only way you can stop players scoring is by actually getting them out. Um, so yeah, that's that's sort of where it goes. But but the batting's take gone to another level. Uh, yeah, any particular reason to leave out Angelo Matthews? I didn't know he's your most experienced batsman, isn't he? Yeah, no, the, no, there, there wasn't. It, it, it was my first 2020 team with the uh, 2020 game with the team. Um, I, I was reliant on on sort of starting where they sort of finished. You know, Angelo brings us a wealth of experience. He's a he's a very very good cricketer. So we needed to start from a base and then and then look at how we could tinker with the team. And and how we could how we could um, get to everybody's specific role, and that's still going to take us a little bit of time. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's really good having a guy like Angelo around because of his experience. And uh, the only reason he didn't play was simply because it was it was the starting point, and we almost started with what they finished their last their last series with. Uh, he hasn't played for 16 months, I think, in the squad. So so that was the only reason. Uh, Mickey, how, uh, you spoke about. Taking wickets being the key in T20, and your minus Isro Udana for tomorrow's game. Yeah. So how do you how do you contain this uh, Indian team, which lost to Sri Lanka in the last match they played in Pune 2016, yeah. but then India have been dominating in the head to head except for one loss. They have won mm-hmm. almost all subsequent yeah. to that. Yeah. Look, I, I mean, I, I think I think we teams at at totally different. Ends of the spectrum, and I know India are trying some some really good young players, and 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 they've there's there's an abundance of talent here. You know, the the players that they bring in, just stand up and just and just do the job. You know, um, and I think that speaks volume for the structures that they have now. Um, for us, it is about we've we, we've got we've got a set of players here that I think are very skilled. Um, I said that after the game in indoor, they're very skilled. Uh, we need to educate them a little bit in terms of. Game plans in terms of strategy, in terms of managing match management, um, knowing when to take the risk, knowing when to not take the risk. We're working hard on rotating strike, and it was amazing. We, we work at at 25 percent. India had 25 percent dot balls the other night. We had 40 percent. So that that those are the little things that that we're working on. We're, all, all I want to see us doing is get better and better. With every outing, with every game, we've got to get better and better. Because in eight months' time. We've got to we, we've got to be we've got to be competing. It's tough with us without Isuru, um, and if you if you take Pradeep as well, you know Pradeep got injured just before we came um, in a fielding practice. So so that's two of our most experienced 2020 bowlers not here. You know you got Malinga, Pradeep, and Isuru is a pretty good pretty good combination. Uh, we minus those two, but we've got some some good young players. You know uh, Lahiri Kumara is going to be. A very, very good player. Uh, Kasan Rajita is going to be a very, very good bowler. Um, I mean, Malinga's—he's—he's—he's he's, he's a legend. You know, he just—he just—he he just knows what he's doing. And we've got two very good wrist spinners here. So perhaps, perhaps tomorrow we have a look at 
you know, maybe, maybe trying, to, trying to see if our wrist spinners can't, can't do anything. Again, we'll just have a look to see what the wickets. There was a bit of grass on the wicket this morning, um, which would obviously look to aid the quick bowlers. But um, we'll just have a look tomorrow. Maybe it's baked and maybe we can play out two mystery spinners and see what happens there. Uh, Mickey, uh, Sri Lanka is passing through transition phase, yeah. it is said that, but they very pleasantly surprised everyone by winning in Pakistan. Uh, my question is whether this transition phase will get over by the time we reach T20 World, World Cup in October. You feel that uh, whether there will be a finished product or still uh, work in progress? I, I still think by the time we get to uh, October, and, and this is what I keep stressing to, to our players, I keep stressing it to, to our players, to the group of selectors, is that we, we need to show consistency. We need to pick a squad now that we think are the best. And, and, and this is a series where we, you know, we're finding out. It's my first time with the guys. Are we finding out about who can play and what roles they can play? Because, you know, as I say, as you said, we've got eight, eight months. Um, I think we've got, a, we, we've got quite a bit of cricket before, though. We've got the West Indies series. There's a series with South Africa. There's another series with India. We've got a series with Scotland um, and a series with Zimbabwe. So we, ha we do have a little bit of cricket coming up in order to get that balance right. But we don't want to be going into October not knowing what our best team is. So the sooner we can get that settled, the better. Um, I think we're probably down to about 18 or 19 players now for those 15 spots. Um, and, and, you know, I've, I've done a hell of a lot of work over the last 10 days with these guys to try and familiarize myself with a brand that we can play, a brand that is going to be particular to the skill sets that our players possess, um, and then moulding in the roles that each guy can play to ultimately give us some success. So, yeah, eight, eight months is, is short, um, but we've got no option. We, we, need to be, we, need to, we have to go there and qualify. Um, so we, we've, got to, we, we've got to be on the money come the first game. But I do think in 2021, coming back to India, with the skill sets that we have, if we can keep these young boys together, I do think by that time we'll be a force to, to, be, to be reckoned with. Coach, uh, you spoke about uh, T20 batting having evolved so much. Mm. So what can be done to get parity between bat and ball? Perhaps getting rid of uh, the power play, can it be one way? Yeah, I, that, that's, a, that's a really interesting question. I, 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 and, I, and I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. Um, like, I don't think people want to go to games. I think pitches. And I, I, I always say pitches. I think the best test cricket you watch is when the 280 plays, 320 plays, 260 plays a chase of, of about 250. Those, those are good games. And when the pitches offer a little bit for the bowlers, it's, it's, it's really good. Um, Getting rid of the power play, I'm not sure. Like, I don't think spectators want to come to games and just see sixes and fours and sixes and fours. It, it gets a bit boring. I think, I think you want to see bounces and slower balls, but you want to see the bowlers getting a little bit um, out of it. And that could be spin bowlers as well, you know. So I think the best 2020 game is when, is when 155 plays 155 and it goes down to the wire with the bowlers always being interested. I think those are your best games. So... I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is. Um, I don't think the power play necessarily because I think that's quite an, an important um, and quite entertaining role, but maybe pitches. And ground size. Grounds are too small. doesn't aid the spinners. Uh, going back to the question of the transition, right now are you uh, more focusing more on the development of the players instead of the results or how, how is it, what are you looking at? Uh, look, I, 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 I always hate to throw away results because, you know, ultimately we, 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 we have to be in it to win it, you know. Um, and every game we play, we want to win. And I know our boys, are they're a very proud set of players. You ask any international cricketer and they, they want to win every game. Um, so we'll never, ever throw away the result. We, we certainly want to want to win every game we play. But again, for me, it's about learning about the players. It's about the players getting comfortable within a, within a role. So yeah, we are in a developmental phase. We are in a transition phase. It is going to take us a little bit of time, but I, 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 I think it's a cop-out if I, if, if I use that line, certainly in the dressing room and, and to the media, because that's not good enough. We, every time we go out, we want to be winning. Yeah, sure. Your coach, South Africa, Australia, Pakistan, now, uh, now Sri Lanka. What is the
and captain. And, and we had, we had some, some great success. It's great to see those boys back in South African cricket now, the Bouchers, Callises, Smiths. Um, that, was, that was good fun. Australia, for me, was, 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 didn't, didn't really work out. <laughs> I enjoyed my time with Australia. It was different, you know. There were there were some, there were some really good, really good players. It, it 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 was it was a tough environment to coach in, though. And then Pakistan was was fantastic. Uh, I had three wonderful years with that team. And and again, it's exactly where we are with Sri Lanka. Was where we started with Pakistan, number nine in the world in 2020. some really good young players through and I think if I look back on my coaching career those are probably three three of the of the best years I had because I felt I impacted a structure there and certainly impacted some players and you always judge your tenors by by what you leave behind and I think I think we've left behind a really good young set of players what happens to them now is, is, is I, you know is, is certainly up to them but I see exactly the same scenario here with, um, with Pakistan, with, uh, with Sri Lanka. It was amazing. Grant, Grant Flower and I were sitting, because Grant was with me in, in, in Pakistan. We were actually just discussing it the other night that we feel we're in exactly the same phase now with Sri Lanka as we were when we started with Pakistan. And, and hopefully we can mold a team